Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that learned how to make a banana split in Sunday school. My name is Cody. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and take a look at my top 10 hidden trader games of all time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so um, these are my top 10 hidden trader games, games that have some kind of a hidden trader mechanic where... In theory, they're cooperative, but one or more people are secretly working against everyone else. Now, first of all, I have some honorable mentions. Uh, Spyfall from Cryptozoic is great. Uh, that was a game where you, you're, you all have cards that are showing um, the same place, except for the spy. He doesn't know where he is, but nobody knows who the spy is. So he's trying to ask questions. You go through and people ask questions, and you're trying not to give away if you're the spy, but... And then you have to decide who the spy is. Great fun. Uh, Menace Among Us. Menace Among Us was a great game, a great science fiction game. Again, where you're hidden traders on a spaceship and you're trying to, um, you know, figure out what's wrong, what's going on. Uh, I haven't played that one in a long time, but it was a lot of fun. Go ahead, jump into my top 10 games here. Number 10 is Obscurio. Now, if you have played um, Mysterium, Obscurio is kind of the, the sequel to that. And in, and in Obscurio, the difference is one person who is trying to guess is is a secret traitor, is a, is a hidden traitor. And they can actually point people in the wrong ways. The ghost is giving them clues, and they're trying to guess what it is. The hidden traitor can try to steer them in the wrong direction. But it's a, it, it's a great game, because Mysterium is kind of hard enough, where you're all trying to guess what they're trying to get at. But when you have someone deliberately trying to make you you know, think something's not true, it can be very difficult. And of course, the, the ghost is trying their best. They know who the traitor is, but they can't say anything. And it's it's a lot of fun. So that is Obscurio. That is my number 10. And that is from La Bellad. My number 9 was a game that was originally based on another game. It was kind of trying to streamline another game. Um, it was trying to be Battlestar Galactica, and, and it was called BSG Express, but they didn't have the rights to the... To the um, IP, so they went ahead and they kind of retooled it, they made it its own game, and this is Dark Moon from Stronghold Games. Dark Moon is a game of, again, a hidden trader, but you're on like a space station, I think you're on like a moon of Jupiter or something, and you're on the space station and things are going wrong, and there's a very kind of the thing vibe going on here, and what's, what's interesting and different here is in order to like do anything, you're rolling die, and you roll all these die, and they're different colored die, and and a lot of them are like negative numbers, but you, positive numbers are good, negative numbers are bad. And you're contributing die to try to overcome things. But the problem is, are you contributing bad die because that's all you rolled? Or are you contributing bad die because you're a dirty, filthy, hidden trader? And um, it was really fun. It was really interesting. Played this a few times and really enjoyed it. I ended up giving it away because I had other games that were kind of similar to it, but I really did enjoy it quite a bit. And I don't know if it's in print anymore, but it was really a lot of fun. That is Dark Moon. That is my number nine. And that was from Stronghold Games. My number eight is a classic. It's, it's, when I first played this game, I couldn't get enough of it. I absolutely loved it. Uh, and this is uh, The Resistance or The Resistance Avalon. Um, they're essentially the same game, but Avalon adds a few more bells and whistles to it. Um, of the two, I probably prefer Avalon, although they have made some card packs that kind of make the original Resistance more like um, Avalon. But essentially what's going on is in the, Resistance, in the Resistance Avalon, you're either good guys or bad guys. You're either servants of King Arthur or you're, you're evil traitors, minions of Mordred, I think it was called. And what's cool here is one of the good guys is Merlin, and he knows who the bad guys are, but he can't say anything, and no one knows who Merlin is. So Merlin has to kind of subtly guide people toward the truth, which means sometimes he's being suspected. And it's a great game. We, In fact, um, that first year we did TD, TDG, um, we actually had a... Um, we did a live stream of us playing. No, it wasn't a live stream. It was We, we taped it. But it was a, a playthrough of Resistance Avalon, and it was just a lot of fun. I love that game so much. It's been overcome by, by better games, in my opinion, but I still think it's a fantastic game. And if anybody had it and asked me to play it, I'd be there in a heartbeat. That is The Resistance. That is number eight. That was from Indie Boards and Cards, I believe. My number seven is a board game. It's a full-on board game. Social deduction board game, but there's a lot more to it than that. Uh, this, again, when Battlestar Galactica went out of print, um, there was still a lot of call for it, so Fantasy Flight Games decided they were going to try to make a game 
that would be the answer to that. And what they came up with was a game called New Angeles. Now, in New Angeles, how it works is it's it's kind of in the Android Netrunner universe. It's cyberpunk. And the idea is Los Angeles is kind of in the ocean now, right? It's, it's, it's separated from mainland uh, California. And you've got all these companies trying to compete to dominate it. But meanwhile, the federal government is still trying to reassert its power there. So what it means is every player plays a different corporation, but one of the corporations is secretly an agent of the federal government. And what's cool here is in order to win the game, I mean, the hidden trader can win, or the, the various um, uh, corporations can win, but you get like a secret card that says you just have to beat that corporation. You don't have to get the most points overall. You just have to get more points than a specific corporation, right? Or, or, or something like that. But the whole time is you're, you've got all these crises that are popping up in the town. You're trying to clean up and you're, you're actually submitting, um, every round is you're submitting a card that is a proposal, proposed course of action. And then everybody votes on the proposed course of action. You do it. And, uh, the person who, who submitted it, they get points and they get stuff. It's really a fantastic game and I really enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, because of the negotiation aspect, but that hidden trader thing is just the, the, the icing on top of the cake. I played one game one time where pretty quickly the guy who was the trader pretty much let everybody know he was a trader, and it was not fun. Did not enjoy it at all. It, it, it was a bad experience. But when you got somebody who's playing the hidden trader and they play their cards pretty close to their chest, it is fantastic. There's a lot of paranoia there. So that is number seven. That is New Angeles, and that is from Fantasy Flight Games. My number six is another game from Fantasy Flight Games that, again, they tried to catch that fire with Battlestar Galactica. Uh, this time, of course, they didn't have the IP for Battlestar Galactica, so they essentially took the game Battlestar Galactica and put it on a Lovecraftian uh, sea voyage. So this is unfathomable. This came out just a couple of years ago, and it didn't, it didn't really take off, I think, the way they wanted it to. Um, they they kind of captured lightning in a bottle with, with uh, Battlestar Galactica, and I don't know that it translates that well for a lot of people. But I still enjoyed Unfathomable. I think it was great. I think it was creepy. It was eerie. I like the horror aspects of it. And um, generally, I think it was just well done overall. I thought they did just a phenomenal job of taking the, the, the basics, the core mechanics of Battlestar and, and giving it this new luster. I'm sad, though, because I don't think we'll see any expansions to it. Maybe we will, but I don't think we will because, like I say, I don't know that it was that well received. It's a fun game. I enjoy it. I'd much rather play Battlestar, but as we'll see. But I do enjoy Fathomable quite a bit, and I played it a few times now, and, and have had a, really a lot of fun. So that's Unfathomable. The Unfathomable. That is my number six, and that is from Fantasy Flight Games. My number five. This game may be, and I'm not sure, and I'm sure somebody out there can correct me if I'm wrong. But my number five may have been the first hidden trader game ever. Hidden board game, hidden trader game, and this is Shadows Over Camelot. Now, in Shadows Over Camelot, of course, one of you is, um, well, you're all Knights of the Round Table, and one of you may be a hidden trader, but not necessarily. There may be no hidden trader in a game. And you've got, essentially on your turn, you can take these positive actions, but then you have to take negative actions. You can take a hit point on yourself, or you can place a catapult in front of, of uh, Camelot, or you can play an evil card. There's a good card deck and an evil card deck. And it's so funny because there's times where you don't want to take a hit on yourself, so you have to place that camel. And once you get like 12 catapults, game over, evil wins, or you draw one of those cards. And you do one of those things, and as soon as you do one of those things, everybody's accusing, oh, you did that because you're the traitor. You did that because you're the traitor. And it's fantastic. It's super fun. I've also got the expansion to it, but I've never played the expansion. I've just played the original game. But I love, love, love Shadows Over Camelot. One of the truly great hidden traitor games of all time. And one of the first, maybe the first as far as I know, that is my number five, that is Shadows Over Camelot, that is from Days of Wonder. My four is a game that, is, this is a pretty controversial game, because it's one of those games where people either love it or they hate it. And you could almost say with this, and, and maybe even my number three coming up, there are more secret agenda games than hidden trader games, but I still think there's enough of a social deduction tension there that I would put this in with it, with the... Um, with that um, category of hidden trader games. But my number four is uh, Dead of Winter from Plat Hat Games. Dead of Winter, of course, is a zombie game. But it's unlike a lot of the zombie games you play. 
Um, you've you've got that dice. I think I think Quinn's on Shut Up and Sit Down called it the meanest dice and die in, in in game ever, where every time you move, you you risk getting hit and infected with the zombie um, disease, whatever. You you risk becoming a zombie. But you have like several characters. Each player has several characters they play. But it's a great game, and then of course everybody has their own agenda. Now, as you if you got your own agenda, some people are playing. Well, okay, I can I can do this, and I can do this, and I can do this. Um, but some people are trying to achieve those agendas, and it looks to everyone else though like they're trying to screw everyone over, right? And they're not. They're just trying to say, I need to hoard so much food, or I need to do so much of this. But at the same time, if we need food and you're hoarding it, it looks like you're you're a traitor. And then some people actively want the colony to fail. It's a great zombie game. It's a great social deduction game. And I really, really enjoy Dead of Winter. So that's Dead of Winter. That is my number four. And that is from Plat Hat Games. My number three, like I said, this is this too is kind of a, more of a, a hidden agenda game. But, but again, I, I would put it in this hidden trader game. Uh, this is Nemesis from Awakened Realms. Nemesis from Awakened Realms is, I just started playing it here a little more than a year ago. And it's quickly become one of my favorite games just because it is, it's it's essentially aliens without the aliens IP. But it's very thematic. It's very dark. It's very horror science fiction. And one of, and, and, like, and like the hidden traitor thing isn't necessarily we want everything to fail, but you know, for a lot of people, their, 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 their agenda is to get the spaceship safely home. But then some people are trying to sabotage the spaceship, or some people, maybe their objective is just to kill another player. I had that great game with George when uh, uh, he, he, I, I had to kill him. He couldn't survive. And we're on the ship, and he, ordinarily you can't just shoot another player or toss a grenade at him. Um, but you can if there's an alien with him. So he was in a room with an alien, and I threw a grenade. I kind of tipped my hand, and I threw a grenade in there. Uh, and he survived, and he got out, but ultimately he did die, and I won the game. Fantastic. But Nemesis is just, just great. If you want great theme, if you want great action, Nemesis is just about as good as you can get out there. Uh, so that is uh, number three. That is Nemesis. That is from Awakened Realms. Okay, my number two. This is a game that, uh, this is one of the games I've probably played most of all time. I played this game a ton over the years. I think I got it in 2017, and I've just played it a lot since then. And this is a game, too, that, you know, I played this, it was funny, when I was in Texas, I actually had a professor that let me play this in, in a class one time, because I was presenting on World War II. And then I, I, I've also actually played this with my students when I did my Nazi Germany class and my World War II class. This is Secret Hitler. Secret Hitler is a game where you were all in the Weimar Republic parliamentary system. And some of you are liberals, some of you are fascists, but nobody knows who's who. And one of the fascists is Hitler. And then the best way to play it is with nine or 10 people, because then even Hitler doesn't know who the other fascists are. And it's great fun and it, tremendous paranoia. I've had people screaming at each other uh, in this game, and you're just laughing throughout. One of, the, In my opinion, one of the most fun, straight social deduction games out there that I've ever played. Probably, you know, if we're not talking about a board game, we're just talking straight social deduction, it's probably, it is my favorite. I love Secret Hitler a lot. And I like it too because you can play with a high player count and the games aren't terribly long. Um, so you can play, you know, like when I play this with my class, I usually play two or three games in a row. But that is Secret Hitler. That is one of my favorite social deduction games of all time. That is my number two. Well, my number one, I'm sure you've guessed it. I've mentioned it enough during this list. My favorite social deduction game, that is to say my favorite board game with a hidden traitor, is Battlestar Galactica from Fantasy Flight Games. Now, Battlestar Galactica, the board game, uh, I want to say it came out about 2008 or so. Now, I was a huge fan of the TV show. I loved the TV show. I liked the original, but the, the reboot was just freaking awesome. 2003, I think. Just such an awesome TV show. And I don't know what they did, but somehow, I think Corey Kay designed it, they managed to take that TV show and put it into the box because the, the, the TV show is all about paranoia. It's all about paranoia. And the board game is all about paranoia. And they do it so well. Thematically, it works so well. I've had so much fun with Battlestar Galactica over the years. I remember the first time we played it. In fact, I mentioned this before. Prior to playing Battlestar Galactica, really the only board games I played were war games. Axis and Allies, um, well, I guess Diplomacy, 
a handful of others, but I really only played war games. That was my jam. I played Tide of Iron, too. Not long before this, I played Tide of Iron. That was my first FFG game. And I really liked war games. And anytime I saw a game that was not a war game, I kind of thought, eh, how fun could it be, really, if you're not moving dudes on a map? Right? I just wasn't interested. And then for Christmas one year, my friend Jason actually bought this game for me. And I remember thinking to myself, well, you know, I'll play it. I'll see if it's any good. And we took it over to a friend's house where four or five of us, we played it. And we're like, holy crap, war games can do this? You can have this kind of experience with cards and board game, and it was blowing us away. And we absolutely loved it. I've played this game many times since. You can see my reviews. I reference it. I talk about it all the time because it is such a good board game. And I know I've actually had people to ask me in the comments to shut up about it because it's out of print. If you buy it online, it's, it's prohibitively expensive. And so people are not too happy about that. I'm sorry. What can I say? I wish they would bring it back. I really wish they would because everybody should have a copy of this game. Everybody should play a copy of this game. It is that good. Uh, some of my favorite board gaming experiences have been around a copy of Battlestar Galactica, the board game. It's just fantastic. I can't talk it up enough. I love, love, love this game. So that is my number one, Battlestar Galactica, the board game. That is from Fantasy Flight Games. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for joining us today. Please, as always, let me know. What do you think? Do you, do you like the games I've listed here as Hidden Trader games? Do you not like them? What games would you put on there? I'm always very interested to hear what you have to say. Just please keep it civil. Um, and then please leave a comment here on YouTube, Board Game Geek, Facebook, Twitter. We'd love to hear from you. Please uh, subscribe to us here on YouTube. Like us on Facebook. Uh, follow us on Twitter. Uh, we'd really ask you to do those things. And I'd ask you to please check out my other channel. That's Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history and books on history. I'm currently uploading my World War II lectures on that channel. So please subscribe to that channel. It would really mean a lot to me. And also please give a thumb to this uh uh, video when, we, when I put it on Board Game Geek. And also, too, if you've really enjoyed the channel, you like the stuff we do here uh, over the years, I would ask you to please uh, leave us a tip with the Super Thanks button here on YouTube. That would really mean a lot to us as well. And now, ladies and gentlemen, um, I got a one thing I just I, I want to say is I, I would really hope that you would keep me in your thoughts today and in the days to come. Nothing's wrong. I, I just like attention. Hey, somebody help me. I'm on my feet again. And I don't know where I'm going. And I don't know where I've been. Hey, somebody help me. I'm on the solid ground. It's a long time. And I'll be dying. Once a year I wind up in the band. I go that I love to fight. But I don't ever know when. It's a fine line. To get me time. I got that man. Sean, I need you to tell me what's at stake with this, with this, uh... Probably the fate of the Battlestar Galactica, because I am not like a no cyborg. Thing. I hate this game so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this game so bad, because I'm not a Cylon, but it's like I can't even say it without a spray face. All right. It just makes me look stupid and guilty. I'm not a Cylon. So what is this skill check for, Sean? This is to get me out of the brig. Okay. So, you, are, you guys are all dicks. <laughs> <laughs> did you put that in, Cody? What? Did you put this red one in? I did not. Minus one. <laughs> There's a zero card. Double Each strength. Is double strength, so we got eight now. Well, there's a yellow. That's zero. Interesting. Only Cylons would have put that in. Four, I didn't contribute any cards. Seven. <laughs> oh, and I did. I'm out. 